I am Lydia. I've been married for three years and am a stay-at-home mom with a husband and daughter. My husband, Robert, works as an office employee. He's cool and reserved, but he works hard for our family. One day, I received an unusual phone call during his lunch break. Curious, I answered the call, assuming it must be something urgent for him to call at this time. However, what Robert said was utterly unbelievable. To uncover the truth, I visited someone, and there I discovered an unexpected and shocking revelation. On an ordinary weekday afternoon, while reading and sipping coffee, I received a call from Robert. He rarely calls during work hours, so I was surprised. Immediately after answering, Robert began saying incomprehensible things. His voice sounded lower than usual, and I sensed both anger and confusion through the phone. I couldn't grasp the meaning of what he was saying, but he continued. Hey, so it seems you're leaving our child to my mother every weekday. What's going on? I was taken aback by Robert's accusation. He quickly clarified that he wasn't blaming me but wanted me to listen. Apparently, my mother-in-law had called him earlier. Our apartment and her house are about an hour's drive apart, so we rarely meet. Aside from occasional family gatherings during the new year, we don't visit often. Plus, I don't have a driver's license, so I usually handle transportation, especially with our young daughter. Given this context, the idea of me going to my in-law's place every day seemed absurd. According to my mother-in-law, I was leaving our child to her daily and going out to play. She claimed she had reached her limit and called Robert. When Robert heard this, he vehemently denied it. However, my mother-in-law had sent photos of her pushing the stroller with our baby girl or videos of her drinking milk. Robert was puzzled by these images. I also saw the forwarded photos, but something felt off. They all showed the child from behind or in profile, never showing her face clearly. None of these photos show her face directly. I pointed out. Robert quietly agreed, saying, yeah. Despite both of us defending our positions to my mother-in-law, the conflicting accounts left us frustrated and at a loss. I reassured him, saying, I've never left our child at my in-laws, and she's right here with me. Robert apologized, realizing he had jumped to conclusions. After that, he fell silent. Robert must have been contemplating various thoughts, but I couldn't help wondering why my mother-in-law suddenly made such an accusation. Robert, being a kind and family-oriented person, probably didn't want to believe that his own mother was lying. However, he couldn't strongly blame me without any certainty, which might explain his half-hearted approach. Robert, let's go to your mother's place and find out. I suggested. Robert agreed with a simple understood and hung up. Over the weekend, we headed to my in-law's house after a long time. Although I was a bit worried about our nine-month-old daughter being in the car for an hour, she didn't fuss at all, and we arrived safely. When we pressed the intercom, hurried footsteps echoed, and the door opened. There stood my stern-faced mother-in-law. Robert said, Mom, we'd like a detailed explanation. She sighed and replied, Honestly, Weston claims Lydia has been leaving her daughter to him, so I wanted to hear Lydia's side of the story. Robert and I exchanged glances, both puzzled. Weston, Robert's brother, had been married but divorced within six months due to some trouble. Even though my interactions with my in-laws were minimal, the idea of Weston and me being connected was absurd. Robert had tried explaining this to my mother-in-law, but she remained stubborn. Still, I couldn't see her as someone who would lie. 
Um, those photos. Weston took them, right? I asked. My mother-in-law nodded. Strangely, all the photos showed my mother-in-law's arms, body, and face, clearly taken intentionally from that angle. Given the context, it was likely Weston, but as expected. I sighed, unstrapped our daughter from the baby carrier, and showed her to my mother-in-law. The last time you saw our daughter was when she was about a month old, right? It's been nine months since then, so her appearance has changed. But this child is undeniably ours. As my mother-in-law peered at our daughter, their eyes met. Our daughter smiled, but my mother-in-law's expression tightened. Clearly, the child she had cared for looked different. Robert also didn't seem to see his mother-in-law lying, and there was silence between us. At that moment, we heard the sound of the front door opening, and someone said, I'm home. Robert and my mother-in-law headed toward the entrance, and I peeked from the slightly open living room door. There, Weston was holding a baby who appeared to be about the same age as our child. Curious about this strange phenomenon, both my mother-in-law and Robert questioned Weston. However, Weston confidently insisted on some outrageous claims. The more we listened, the more nonsensical his statements became. Then, a shocking revelation emerged. Weston chuckled and said, Oh, so I've been caught. Naturally, Robert confronted him, asking, Why would you do such a thing? Weston's response was unexpected. Well, I dislike both Robert and Lydia. While it made sense for Robert, since they're brothers, I couldn't fathom why Weston disliked me someone he had no connection to. According to Weston, Robert's annoying habit of outperforming him at work was the reason. Interestingly, both Robert and Weston worked at the same company. Their workplace was owned by Robert's uncle, and it followed a pattern where young male family members joined, gained experience, and eventually became independent, strengthening ties between companies. However, Despite Robert's rapid promotion to a managerial position, Weston remained an ordinary employee. Frustrated, Weston expressed his selfish opinions. But then, he took it a step further. You know, Lydia, the reason I got divorced was because of you. Honestly, you're cuter than my ex-wife Anna, and she got jealous and asked for a divorce. I had only met Anna once so her opinion of me hardly mattered. Weston's dislike for Robert led him to concoct a plan to harass his despised brother. Suddenly, our daughter started crying, sensing the tension. As I tried to soothe her, Weston glanced at her and remarked, Ugh, she's not cute. That was my breaking point. I vowed to teach this incredibly rude Weston a lesson. I was ready, no more holding back. Before any of us could speak, my mother-in-law raised a crucial question. So, whose child are you holding? We had all wondered the same thing. Upon closer inspection, the baby's features did resemble ours. Weston's response, however, was mind-boggling. Oh, it's my child with my ex-wife. The shock was palpable. After all, Weston and his ex-wife had divorced two years ago, and this child looked about the same age as our daughter. Weston broke up with Anna two years ago, would it be strange? Weston briefly showed panic before regaining composure. No, right after we split, I found out she was pregnant, and, well... But his statement had an obvious contradiction. If you knew about the pregnancy two years ago, the child would be around 18 months old, right? I pointed out. Weston stumbled over his words, and Robert added, 
You said that Anna was married to a rich man after divorce with you. Finally, Weston's confident facade cracked, revealing his anxiety. Did I really say that? Ha ha ha. His face was smiling, but his eyes darted left and right, clearly flustered. Just then, Weston's phone rang. He panicked, muttering. I remembered Anna said she'd call later. I swiftly snatched his phone away. Weston reached out to retrieve it, but Robert intervened. I pressed the call button, and Anna's voice came through. Hello? Listen, my husband is coming home early today, so could you return our daughter around 4 p.m.? She chatted away, assuming she was speaking to Weston. When I introduced myself, there was silence. After a few seconds, Huh? Why are you there? Clearly agitated, Anna demanded an explanation. I instructed her to come over and hung up. We waited for about 30 minutes until Anna arrived. As soon as she entered the living room, she snapped at Weston. Why did you get caught? Weston stammered, explaining how he misunderstood Anna's pregnancy timing, given that she was now married to someone else. Anna's anger flared. This idiot. And why did you tell your mother that Lydia's child was yours? You should have said it was your girlfriend's child. She grabbed Weston's collar, furious at his honesty. Upon further inquiry, it turned out that Anna divorced Weston two years ago and remarried six months later. While the reason for their divorce seemed to involve me, there was another significant factor. Weston had accumulated substantial debt, making repayment impossible. So, they faked their divorce. Legally separated, Anna married a wealthy man who had been pursuing her. Despite the fake divorce, their lingering feelings remained. Anna withdrew money from her new husband's savings to help Weston repay his debts. Even after the divorce, they met frequently, and during one of those encounters, Anna became pregnant with their current child. Well, it's not entirely implausible, right? But were you planning to remarry after paying off the debt? I asked incredulously. Weston and Anna fell silent. My mother-in-law couldn't hold back. Your actions are outright infidelity. Pay proper compensation to Anna's current husband and decide your future. And why did you push your child onto me, claiming it was Lydia's? Weston's feeble excuse about finding parenting difficult and wanting to hang out with friends elicited collective sighs. Suddenly, Robert interjected. So what about you and your current girlfriend? Anna hesitated, saying, Well, that's just another excuse. But I noticed Weston's pained expression. Anna, judging by Weston's reaction, it seems like he's telling the truth, I remarked. Weston snapped back, denying everything, but Anna's face tightened. Unable to bear everyone's scrutiny, Weston tearfully confessed. Actually, I'm dating someone I met on a dating app. She's pregnant with our child, and we plan to get married eventually. At that moment, Anna's eyes widened, and she grabbed Weston's collar. What? After I helped you repay your debt and even raised your child, you're impregnating another woman and planning to marry her. The sound of a recording ending interrupted the tension. All eyes turned to Robert. I've recorded everything just now. I'll report Weston's actions to our uncle. As soon as Robert spoke, Weston turned even paler. Weston stammered. Wait! That's a problem. If our uncle finds out about this, I'll be fired. 
but Robert had already sent it to their uncle, leaving Weston in despair, collapsing to his knees. Anna's actions aren't blameless either, so let's not solely blame Weston. I suggested, redirecting Anna's anger toward me. Anna, now crimson with rage, pushed me and exclaimed, Aren't you entirely at fault? Being cuter than me is your biggest sin. Her words made little sense. Nursing my scraped knee from the push, I continued. Ah, this recent incident could be considered assault, right? My brother is a lawyer, so I'll report this to him. Excuse me for now. Anna, alarmed by the mention of a lawyer, frantically apologized. While my mother-in-law intervened to calm them down, we quickly got into the car and left the family home. Later, Robert's uncle, after watching the video, was furious and promptly fired Weston. It's a downside of running a family business, such matters can be resolved swiftly. Additionally, my mother-in-law was livid that her son had disrupted another family and immediately contacted Anna's husband. Naturally, he was furious and divorced Anna. As for the child Weston's child is considered Anna's husband's. He spent a significant sum hiring a top-notch lawyer, gained custody, and moved far away. Anna was saddled with substantial debt due to divorce settlements and the money previously used for Weston's debt repayment. Understandably, Weston's girlfriend chose the path of a single mother and severed ties with him. This incident prompted us to visit the family home more often, deepening our relationship. Currently, our relationship with my mother-in-law is excellent. Regarding Anna's assault, I consulted my brother, who advised, She should reflect on her actions. Ultimately, Anna compensated me with a few hundred dollars in a settlement. With that money, I could buy clothes and toys for our daughter. Our worries have dissipated, and we feel refreshed. Moving forward, I hope to build a happy family with Robert, our daughter, and the son in my tummy. How was this story? Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.